Alright guys, today we're going to be going over types of attractive forces. Uh, there's five listed here, but we're going, we're only going to concern ourselves over the first three. Um, London forces are most uh, elementary or foundational forces. Uh, no matter how complex or simple something is, it will always have London forces. Hydrogen bonds, uh, which is, you know, hydrogen bonding, which are really just forces, are only present when hydrogen is bonded to either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So basically, in order to have hydrogen bonding, you have to have THON, F or N, present. And you have to have hydrogen attached to those. Uh, a dipole-dipole attraction, which is also known as Van der Waals, Van der Waals forces, is basically just something that is polar. Anyway, um, uh, oh yeah, London forces are also known as dispersion forces. They're weak. Strongest being hydrogen bonds. The one in the middle is dipole dipole, which is polar. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's look at let's look at one um, problem that we need to go over, and this is the problem that we're going to go over. Uh, notice th that you have methanol, you have dimethyl ether, and you have two noble gases. Well, one thing we know for sure is is that both uh, both of these and both of these, even though these two are simple. Uh, structures and these two are complex they will all have London forces now since you know that then the easiest thing to do is to, for me to be lazy and just copy this and put it on both sides okay so this is London forces uh, this is London forces I should say all four sides not both sides and London forces now we're done with these two in the middle because there's no hydrogen and there's nothing polar about them whatsoever. Um, however, uh, we do need to look for uh, a dipole dipole. We need to see if these other ones are polar. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, these two are polar. If you want to know why, I'm going to show you. Notice that on this oxygen, they're not showing the octet rule, meaning we only see two and four. So we're missing two lone pairs. They're not showing us these two lone pairs, which are there and there. And on this one, same thing here, two, four. It's missing two other dots, six and eight. Okay, there. We have now shown these. Now, in unit three, we talked about a molecular number, which is molecular geometry. Uh, you have two bonds on this central atom here and you have two lone pairs so it's a 2-2 two, two, okay meaning we will need to look at the molecular geometry sheet to find that okay and same thing here two bonds and two lone pairs so it's also 2-2 two, two. so if you look on the molecular geometry sheet you'll notice that 2-2 two, two, which is handout 6a from unit 3 2-2 two, two is bent it's a bent structure meaning since this is white it is polar. If it was gray, it'd be nonpolar. So we know that both of these contain a dipole dipole. So we're going to go ahead and put that down now. Okay, so this is dipole dipole. Maybe I should make that black. Can I do that? Thank you. Make that black. And I'm lazy. I'm not going to type it again. So I'm just going to copy that and put it over here. Okay, so that's dipole dipole. Now only one of these exhibit hydrogen bonding and I'm going to show you that. Hydrogen bonding is exhibited right here. Now let me tell you why this is hydrogen bonding. This is hydrogen bonding because hydrogen is with not F but it's with O and the other option is if it was with N. Notice that this hydrogen notice that this hydrogen is with an O so it meets the criteria for hydrogen bonding so let's go ahead and write that down it is hydrogen bonding so hydrogen bonding so let me make it black again so that concludes that one okay now as far as like uh, which of the following uh, rank them by lowest to highest boiling point the lowest would be well starting with the most simple of forces the, these two here well which one do you write down first NE or AR well that's where we need to look at a periodic table and on the periodic table if you notice NE and AR here are uh, in the same column because they're both noble gases but notice that NE weighs the less when they have the same number of forces or the same type of forces okay 
then you go by molar mass. So the weakest would be NE. So we would write NE down first. Okay, so NE would have the lowest. Then the next in line would be AR. Now, question is, which one do we write down next? Well, the easiest thing to be is to ask yourself which one would have the highest between these two. Well, the highest would be methanol. Methanol would have the highest boiling point because it's got the most amount of forces. So, that means next in line there must be this dimethyl ether. So, that's H3 C O C H 3 and last but not least it's going to be methanol C H 3 O H okay and that concludes uh, this tutorial as far as uh, understanding your intermolecular forces. Just remember this. You're always guaranteed London forces. Okay, you're guaranteed these all the way through. Whoops. You're guaranteed those all the way through. Whoops. Man, I love undo buttons, don't you? You're guaranteed London forces every time. The ones you aren't guaranteed are these, la these other two, dipole, dipole and hydrogen bonding. Okay, so you can never be wrong by saying London forces. And as far as hydrogen bonding, look for Fon, dipole dipole. If they're so nice to draw the structure for you and it's bent, you know definitely it's got dipole dipole. If not, then you're going to have to uh, rely on the local local geometry uh, of the central atom that you're concerned about. So basically, if you look at the green that I'm circling, this is what I looked at. Okay, I looked at that to get the molecular geometry two two, and over here in green I looked at this as well to figure out its molecular geometry. Okay. Anyway guys, I hope this helps and uh, if you need to watch the video over and over and over again. So, alright guys, it's time for the credits.